this is some crazy stuff. It looks like there's a chunk of something holding that exhaust valve open just a hair. Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We've got another fun auction car here. 2012 Mini Cooper S. Look at this hot rod. The hot hatchback. So, customer complaint is a crank no start. The crank's kind of funny. Preliminary checks that I did. We checked the oil. There was nothing in the dipstick except for some drops of water. <laughs> Uh, we added two quarts, now it's in the middle of the stick, so at least it's got some oil in it. And let's turn on the NOCO and crank it over, I'll let you listen to it. Okay, with the Trek Pow jump pack connected, let's crank it. Okay, so not a good sound. First check, let's put on the uh, amp clamp and do a relative compression test. I already popped the spark plugs out, took a look at them. Some of them are really gunky. Sprayed some WD-40 in the cylinders, just in case there is cylinder wash, you know, restore compression. Didn't help at all. So let's get the scope out and see which cylinders are misbehaving. All right, two channels hooked up. One on the positive starter cable. Our amp clamp is in the 60 amp mode. And I'm grabbing the trigger off of ignition coil number one. That's the white control wire right there. Pico scope. Let's, uh, let's crank it, see what happens. All right, here we go. And it's dead. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the, here's the waveform. As you can see, I don't think we have enough humps here. Let's just bump up the scale. There we go. And this is our number one sink. So we got one, two, a little bit, and nothing. One, two, a little bit, and nothing. So let's look up the firing order and see which cylinders we want to focus on in terms of diagnostics and compression. There's the control for the ignition coil. It looks like a triple strike setup here. But we definitely have a mechanical engine problem in this one. So on all data, the firing order is 1, 4, 2, 3. Kind of a weird firing order for a four cylinder engine. So 1, 4, 2, 3. 1, 4, 2, 3. Interesting. Back to our scope capture. That would be 1, 4, 2, 3. So the middle cylinders look to be. Um, Missing compression. Very interesting. What if there's a blown head gasket between them? What are the chances that two cylinders lose compression at the same time? Hmm. Well, what we could do is get a bore scope down in there, look at cylinders two and three, and then um, we could do a leak down check, see where, where the leak is. Uh-oh. I think we found the breaking point of the Trek cow. <laughs> He gave us about five good cranks and done. Okay, so all data is indeed wrong. This is not a magic engine. Our firing order is one, three, four, two, classic. One, three, four, two. So on the relative compression test, we had one is good, three is good, and then four and two were low compression. So, they're not side by side, so it's not a blown head gasket. But we still have to do a leak down check, determine why 
those two cylinders have low compression. We could do an in-cylinder pressure transducer, um, or we can use a boroscope as a visual inspection to look into two and four. Here are the spark plugs, one, two, three, and four. They're wet with fuel, so there's definitely getting fuel. The middle two look the most gunked up. But again, with spark plugs, it's not a guaranteed, you know, it's a clue, but we'll, uh, we'll follow the data. All right, pressure transducers in cylinder number two. Let's, uh, let's plug in a number one coil. So we still have a sink. Let's see what's going on in the cylinder. All right, three channels. Let's crank it. <laughs> uh, nothing at all on our pressure transducer. Like not even one PSI, which is crazy. So something's definitely wrong with cylinder number two. We can try moving to a different cylinder. Let's bump up the scale. So we see tiny little changes there. Hmm. Let's try a known good cylinder. Okay, so cylinder number one. Let's crank it. Well, at least we got something. So timing's definitely not off. The spark's occurring right at top dead center there. We have this huge expansion pocket so intake compression comes down an exhaust and goes into vacuum for a while so we can put some cursors in here go to rulers four rulers So that's zero degrees crank. It's going to be 720. Does that make any sense? That vacuum pocket's continuing all the way through to almost 360. So, yeah, I don't really like that. This is almost like that, uh, that Suzuki XL7 where the camera's way off. So if, if there is a pocket it should come down and then the exhaust valve should open right at about 180 degrees near bottom dead center, not all the way out here. I mean regardless this engine is uh, gonna have to be torn apart. Okay so cylinder number three now should be right after number one. Okay, and we see basically the same pattern as cylinder number one, where if we put in our cursors, there's zero. <laughs> it keeps beeping. Yeah, that exhaust valve is opening way too late. 
This is crazy. It's almost like the Suzuki XL7. Very, si very similar pressure waveform. That, that blows my mind. What, what, what are the chances? But this one doesn't run because it's only a four cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> Last but not least, cylinder number four. And here we go. Nothing. Just like the relative compression test showed. So let's look inside and do a visual inspection on cylinders. Uh, what was it? Two and four, and see why there is absolutely no compression. So visual inspection of cylinder number two. This is some crazy stuff. It looks like there's a chunk of something holding that exhaust valve open just a hair. It is completely nuts, right? there and look at the other one the other one's closed that's insane that would definitely explain no compression on cylinder number two if we spin the boroscope around and look at the intake valves they look there's a lot of buildup here, like it was burning oil. That's why we were two quarts slow to begin with. But at least these valves look closed and they, I don't think they look damaged unless that right there is where it kind of touched the piston. We could turn the engine over slowly by hand and see, see how close, you know, if the valve is open at the wrong time or something, if they're retarded. But, I mean, regardless, this is just kind of having fun at this point. You know, the engine needs to come apart, Yeah. obviously. Take the head off. The, the pistons don't have holes in them, so the bottom end can stay in place. Yeah. But it's, it's definitely going to need the head taken off of it and make sure I'll, you know, clean the valves off, make sure they're not damaged. Do the same inspection for cylinder number four. There's the intake valve for cylinder number four. And there's the other one. And let's look at the exhaust valves. Right there. See that the same same thing on this one. There's like, see that chunk there, Ryan? Yeah. See, it's it's that's not that's not right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's one and four, just like we saw in our scope, being held open. And even if we spin the engine over, this isn't going to improve because we already cranked it like ten times. So even though it looks wet and like it should shouldn't be in the way that carbon's probably rock hard yeah. just got there boom valve is open you're you're done so that's it for this one if anyone has any comments or has seen anything similar on mini coopers put them down below otherwise thanks for watching we'll see you next time Ford Escape. so a little bonus footage cylinder number three it is basically a TDC and there's the valve that's open and it almost looks like it's touching the piston or very very close to it so I think sequence of events here was obviously this thing was run out of oil or very low on oil the timing jumped the pistons and the valves had at least a little bit of interaction knocked some carbon off and that carbon got stuck in the exhaust valves between the seat and the valve. Now we have no compression on two and four. But best case scenario here is take the head off, you know, remove the valves, clean everything up, make sure they're straight and they seal nice, lap them in, 
reset the timing, maybe throw a new tensioner at it, oil change, and it's almost no parts required. You know, head gasket, obviously. But this is a very cool case study. And by the way, this bore scope, the test long, very, very cool tool because you can switch cameras from forward to side and inspect both your pistons and your valves and pretty uh, pretty awesome. I'll put it in the Amazon store.